This is the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, episode 55. Let's do it. Welcome to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we help people who are passionate about liberty build a free and flexible lifestyle by becoming a digital entrepreneur. I'm your host, Ash Whitener, and this is episode 55, Refocusing the Mission and Value of Liberty Entrepreneurs. Hey, so welcome back, everyone. It's been an exciting week. I was at a conference in Las Vegas. I'm not interviewing anyone this week, but I've got two main topics. One is recapping my time at the conference, which was called the Rhodium Weekend in Las Vegas, Nevada. It was for digital entrepreneurs. And the second thing I'm going to discuss is something I learned from the conference is that I need to niche, continue to niche down and refocus who I'm making this podcast for. In one of the breakout sessions, somebody asked me a really good question. I think I may have been trolled a bit, but a good question on the list. This guy said, Ash, why should I listen to your podcast? There are a thousand entrepreneurial podcasts out there trying to help people become a digital nomad or quit your nine to five or stuff like that. Like, why should I listen to your podcast? And it really got me thinking. So part of the show today is going to be my thoughts about who I'm making this podcast for and how I'm going to niche down and refocus my message. So stay tuned. This episode may not have an interviewee, but I guarantee it's full of passion and energy. And I think you're going to come away with either knowing that you're in my tribe and knowing that this podcast is for you or knowing that it's not. Also, this show is sponsored by Exodus.io. They're building a multi cryptocurrency wallet for the desktop. It's my preferred wallet, and I'm sure you're going to find it easy to use with a very elegant user interface. They're currently hiring a JavaScript developer for a work from home position. So if you're an experienced JavaScript dev, you like the idea from working from home and the flexibility that that gives, then drop them a line at founders at exodus.io. That's E-X-O-D-U-S dot I-O. Make sure and tell them that Liberty Entrepreneur sent you. Keep up with us on social media by following on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast and Facebook.com slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. Show notes are found on the website, LibertyEntrepreneurs.com. And I really hope you enjoy this show. All right, so let's get started. I just got back from the Rhodium Weekend Conference. It's rhodiumweekend.com. Yes, rhodium is an element. It's it's a very valuable element, kind of like gold, with the idea that the people that get accepted, it's an invite-only conference, the people that get accepted to this conference are value producers. And it's geared towards digital entrepreneurs who are building, buying, and selling cash flowing websites. So basically, if you have a website that you've been able to cash flow, this is where you can go and find other people in the community doing the same thing that you are, get assistance, learn from their experience, teach people whatever you can from your experience, and maybe buy or sell a website. If you're keeping up with the show, you'll know that I interviewed a guy named Trevor Coverco in episode 32. And this was how to buy and sell cash flow and websites. This was my entry point into this whole community. I'm not a big fan of the stock market. I, I don't understand it. I don't really know how to read it or how to gauge it. Or, you know, I've taken technical trading and I don't really understand fundamental trading. And the stock market just isn't something that I'm very interested in. So I'm curious about other investment opportunities and the idea of building and buying cash flowing websites and creating a portfolio of them really struck me as, as interesting, especially since it jives really well to the idea of being a digital entrepreneur 
and being able to move around the world and have that flexible lifestyle that I've become accustomed to and that I'm trying to help my listeners, you, create for yourself as well, that that free and flexible lifestyle. This conference was amazing. It packed more value than any conference I've ever attended. And I've gone to quite a few this year, Bitcoin conferences, uh, ANCAP or anarcho-capitalist type conferences. I've gone to podcast conferences. I've gone to financial and blogging conferences. And now I just came back from a digital entrepreneur conference. And the people that I met, the community that they have, and the willingness for everyone to help each other, the excitement, the the energy, the passion, the intellect. These were some of the smartest people I've ever met. And they're very humble and helpful. It's just a, a really beautiful community. And it makes sense because we're all flexible in our time and in our businesses, and we are building the lifestyle that we want. A lot of people there weren't libertarian or weren't anarchists, but it didn't really matter because they were doing the same thing that I and hopefully you, if not now, then in the future are doing. And that is generating and creating wealth online by finding niches and solving problems. A lot of the times knowledge problems. To give you an idea of some of the businesses that uh, this community is creating and building, uh, it's affiliate marketing, review sites, authority sites, uh, Amazon FBA sites, basically selling your products on Amazon. There are some podcasters there, not, not many, but there were. Community membership sites and mastermind groups, premium subscription-based websites, drop ship and self-fulfillment e-commerce sites, uh, SaaS or software as a service businesses, and all sorts of different types of websites that they've been able to use their knowledge and passion and start building and cash flowing. And it's not uncommon for some of these websites to, to make five, ten, twenty thousand dollars a month and even more while you can work from home or from a coffee shop or from a, a work place somewhere out in Singapore. I'm not sure. It's it's very flexible and it's really the type of lifestyle that I am trying to get across on this show. So it really struck me and, and it made me think a couple things, but I'll get to some of those in the second half of the show. There was a common theme of people who wanted to escape the cubicle. And I know that a lot of you share that same mindset. You know, you've got a good job, it's paying a decent amount, you've got good benefits, it's, you're probably feeling pretty safe in this job, but you're tired of the monotony, you're tired of coming in, having your tasks to do, being told what to do by your boss, or worrying about whatever, whatever. I, I was in there, look, I worked as an engineer for years in a cube, and sure, you can you know, chat at the water cooler, or maybe you have a chili cook off and stuff like that. But essentially you don't control your time and escaping the cube is a big theme at this conference. And a lot of these people have done it. In order to escape the cube and in order to build your own lifestyle of freedom and flexibility, it requires quite a bit of knowledge and from building your Pacific bank, which is, I'll get into that later, but that's where I got a lot of my entrepreneurial experience. And I know that you have to wear a lot of hats. And so some of those hats are SEO and marketing, systems and workflows, automation, lead generation, managing an email list and drip campaign, uh, social media strategies, offering webinars, encouraging community engagement. All of these are creating value online where there may be a a missing part in the market and you can step in and start creating these businesses to service what someone else either isn't servicing or isn't servicing to the level that you think that you can with your abilities, experience, passion, and knowledge. So there's a ton to learn. Uh, I'm still recovering from the, uh, the overload of information that I got. They called it Uh, drinking from a fire hose. And after the first day, I'm telling you, I couldn't imagine what else I could learn. And just for three days in a row, I drank from the fire hose. It was invigorating and exhausting at the same time. 
and I'm so glad to be part of this community. Uh, I'll leave some of the links in the show notes. Again, it's a very small community, uh, invite-only type conference, but there are a lot of new people there this year, which makes me think that this, this community is really growing. And if you're interested in becoming a digital entrepreneur and you see the value in taking control over your life and start creating your own income and not having to sell your time to someone else so that you can spend more time with your family, you can travel the world, you can pick up and move to Panama for three months or three years, or you can just travel around the United States and see all the amazing places there. It really doesn't matter. You can do it by becoming a digital entrepreneur and escaping that cubicle. I want to give a quick shout out to Chris Yates. He is the organizer of the Rhodium Weekend Conference. He did an absolutely amazing job in building this community. I'm quite envious about his success. Uh, he's such a humble and friendly and nice guy. He just wants to help other people be successful. And that really mirrors what my purpose is with Liberty Entrepreneurs. So I, I'm really hoping that this refocusing on digital entrepreneurship helps you. That's not saying that you can't create your lifestyle freedom and flexibility by being a, a, a regular entrepreneur or a brick and mortar entrepreneur, a more traditional entrepreneur. Maybe you open up a bakery or something like that. I, I think that's great. That, that is not what this podcast is about. This podcast is now being refocused to concentrate on digital entrepreneurship because I believe it has the lowest barrier to entry to get into. You could create an e-commerce site in just a couple weeks for just a couple hundred dollars. You don't typically need to get a lot of licensing. You don't have to rent a brick and mortar place or, or staff people with try to staff within your city. You know, there's lots of virtual assistants and virtual digital tools out there to link up all of your software. It's just, in my opinion, the best way to get into the entrepreneurial mindset and actually start putting action into work so that you can experience what it feels like to build a business that you own and reap the benefits of that. Okay, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Before we get into the second half, I wanted to remind you that this podcast is sponsored by Exodus.io. They are building a multi-cryptocurrency desktop wallet that I use and highly recommend. They're hiring a JavaScript developer for a work from home position. If you're interested in the cryptocurrency space, you are ready to become a digital entrepreneur. You like the idea of working from home on an exciting cryptocurrency project and you have JavaScript experience, then drop them a line at founders at exodus.io. That's E X O D U S dot I O. And maybe you could start building your own free and flexible lifestyle by working with the Exodus team. So again, drop them a line at founders at exodus.io and make sure and tell them that Ash from Liberty Entrepreneur sent you. All right, let's get back to the show. So the second part of this podcast is a bit more personal. I wanted to build a podcast that anyone could listen to because I truly believe that entrepreneurship, specifically digital entrepreneurship, is one of the best ways to create personal freedom, to build that free lifestyle. And you don't have to be a libertarian or an ANCAP to reap these benefits. But what I noticed is that it was too broad. When I was trying to make a podcast for everyone, I was actually making a podcast for no one. And with the new refocus on digital entrepreneurship, I wanted to, I wanted to also focus on who it was I was trying to speak to, whose language did I speak? At one of the breakout sessions at the Rhodium Weekend Conference, someone asked me, and I think they may have been trolling me, but it, it really helped. He said, why should I listen to your show? There are a lot of entrepreneurial podcasts out there trying to help people break out of the mold or become a digital nomad or quit your nine to five. And it's just, it's pretty, 
saturated with podcasts and with this perspective. And it got me thinking like, who am I creating this podcast for? Who are you? Who, who are my listeners? Who, whose language do I speak? And I speak the language of the freedom movement. I, of Mises, of Rothbard, of, of F.A. Hayek, of Lou Rockwell and Peter Schiff and Ron Paul. You know, I've watched more Tom Woods and Bob Murphy and Thomas DiLorenzo presentations that I can count. I was at the original Tea Party where Ron Paul raised $6 million in one night. I helped fund the blimp, right, for any of you back in 2007 and eight. I can remember the passion and the energy of finally understanding the free market and how its peaceful interactions and exchanges was a win-win. I understand why gold and silver and now Bitcoin are money and why fiat money always fails. All of this, while it made me smarter, a better debater, and more clear-headed, it didn't make me more free. And this was a very tough conclusion for me to come to a couple years ago. I was actually bogged down with all this history and economic knowledge that it caused me to live life very externally, constantly wondering how I can bring freedom to a large scale rather than personally in my own life. I was concentrated on things that I had no control over, like auditing the Fed or following the money missing in the CIA or the drug war and how it's hypocritical. All of this was interesting, but I eventually found it fruitless. And like, what was the point? What was the point of having all this knowledge if I couldn't do anything with it? Would I just write another blog post? I became angry and wanted to build my bunker and load up on ammo. And <laughs> I was feeling secluded from a world that wasn't free and I was running away from it. It wasn't until I took a chance, a real chance. I was working as a product engineer in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I listened to the Peter Schiff radio show, Shift Radio, every single day. And I learned that he was building an offshore bank in the Caribbean and was looking for young, energetic people to come down and be salesmen and sell you know, hard money products, gold and silver and international mutual funds, and trying to help people diversify out of just a U.S. denominated financial system. It was a commission only position, but I could work for one of my role models at the time. Being tired of my own nine to five cube job, I decided to jump on the opportunity, sell all my stuff, say goodbye to my friends and family and quit my cushy $75,000 a year job to move to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I was confident about one thing, my knowledge and ability to communicate the value of diversifying currencies planting flags outside of your home country, why gold and silver should be in every portfolio, and why we were building a 100% reserve, no loan bank. I truly thought I was going to change the banking system from within. There was just one more thing. The bank was actually a startup. I didn't know that when I started. And I needed to do a lot more than just sell. This was 2012. And this is when I became an entrepreneur. Although I moved to St. Vincent where the bank was, I, I rarely went into the office. I always worked from home, networking with people from around the world, hiring and training and working with staff from around the world, so many different countries and cultures and languages that it started to really resonate within me what I was doing. I was, I was building an online business, not one that I owned, but one that I felt like I was going to build my own little business within your Pacific bank business. And I got the mindset of being an entrepreneur, even though it wasn't my business. Through building your Pacific bank, it became obvious to me that being an entrepreneur had created much more freedom in my own life than any Mises book or Lou Rockwell article or Tom Woods presentation. Now I'm not taking anything away from these guys. They're all scholars. They've done a great job in progressing the peaceful mindset. They help me recognize how the marketplace is almost always mutually beneficial. And it's the engine of wealth and prosperity and the solution to social problems. 
the thing that I experienced was that I finally left theory land and came into reality when I became an entrepreneur. I started combining the action with the theory. Having theory is great, but what's theory worth if you can't put it into action? And that's what I started to do. I was able to work on my own schedule. Yes, sure, I was working 14, 15, 16 hours back then, but I was passionate and I built my own schedule. I could work whenever and wherever I wanted for the first time ever. I didn't have a 30 minute commute on the same road to go to the same cube to see the same people every single day. I traveled to Anguilla. I traveled to Belize. I traveled to Panama. I traveled to Barbados. I could travel anywhere I wanted because all my work was online. As long as I had a decent internet connection, okay, in the Caribbean, decent is about one megabyte per second. But as long as I had a, a decent internet connection, my laptop, and a cup of coffee, I was good to go. I created Liberty Entrepreneurs to help spread this perspective. I want my peers who are passionate about liberty, but are still stuck in the shenanigans of politics or the angry anarchist mindset, that there's another side. There's a side of peace and joy and networking and creativity and wealth creation and solving problems. We always hear about the free market as the answer to our problems, but it's always so vague and without a face. You are the free market. You are the entrepreneur, the engineer of the marketplace. You figure out how to build and create in order to satisfy the pains and desires of your, your peers. If you don't build and create, how can you expect anyone else to? If this resonates with you, if you feel what I'm saying, if you know the people I'm talking about, then this podcast is for you. This podcast is a journey and a challenge. It helps us hold each other accountable for the things that we say matters to us, but instead we just sit around and complain. Look, I get it. I've been there. I appreciate a round of state hate with my buddies like anyone else that recognizes what's going on and the tough situation the government's put us in. But we can't feel sorry for ourselves and dwell. We got to build instead. Let's actually create the world that we want to live in compete with the state services and compete and help each other become successful. We're an army, a peaceful army of people who want to make the world a better place. And we can do it by becoming entrepreneurs and building, creating value, sharing wealth and sharing knowledge. What should you do? <laughs> Look, I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell you what to do. What are you passionate about? What type of knowledge do you have that you can share with the rest of us? Where's your experience and how can you apply that to help someone else live a more comfortable life? Who can you connect us with? Who can I connect you with? How can I help you? What do I need to do to help you become a more successful entrepreneur and thus more free? This is the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. And my goal is to help people passionate about liberty build their own lifestyle of freedom and flexibility by becoming a digital entrepreneur. If you share that mindset, then let me know. I can't do this on my own. I'm raising the yellow and black flag. My vibe will attract my tribe. So let's go. We got a lot to build.